Okay, howdy howdy everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I am Varmithrax, here to play some more Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. You know, doing that thing I do. Do do How's it going? Eh, it's going just fine. You know, it's the best time. Start a new series time. <laughs> Depending on how it goes, I guess. We'll we'll see. Hopefully we got an interesting one to do. Need to uh, give me a second to double check a few things. Make sure I've hit all the buttons in all the places. I think we are all set. Alright, move a few more screens around and I think we're all good to go. So, welcome back everybody. Happy Monday. Uh, my original plan after Friday's stream was to check out the uh, defend mode of Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. I was unsuccessful. <laughs> I, I tried looking at it, but it kept crashing out on me, so I stopped looking at it. <laughs> Very little info out there about it, and uh, I got far enough in where I understand what it's trying to do, and it holds no interest for me, so... I'm not doing the defense mode, both because I don't want to, and because I can't. So, there you go. If anybody else has any luck with it, great. More power to you. But the little bit I was able to see, I... Eh, it's not really the kind of game Cataclysm designed to be, so... Whatever. But, um... Yeah, when it crashes out constantly, there's not much I can do. I don't think anybody's looked at or touched that mode in quite a while, so it doesn't, doesn't surprise me pretty much. <laughs> but, however... None of those options still attached to the game menu for some reason. Yeah, pretty much the double whammy. <laughs> lack of interest and lack of uh, actual ability to get it to run. So, that's fine, that's fine. We got another one going, I'm ready to do, so. What are we doing? Uh, new challenge tonight, we're going to start up a new new, new series. So, as indicated in the, the chat commands, uh, it's called A New Queen. We are playing Arachne, a bionic assassin. We're going to try to basically uh, assassinate the demon spider queen and, uh, you know, become the new, uh, new, new spider queen. So that's the, uh, that's the, the general idea. Is this build cheesy enough to beat the demon spider queen without cheese? I don't know. <laughs> I, I didn't build it with that dodge cheese in mind. So we're not uh, sitting on 15 dodge from the start or anything crazy like that. Uh, we're going to rely on uh, a few things. Uh, both the Bionic Assassin gets the uh, Close Quarters Battle, which I've never actually used much before. And when I looked at it, I started to get more interested in it and how it works and what it does and all that kind of stuff. So I wanted to kind of showcase it as an option. Uh, plus, I'd gotten several requests to do a Spider Mutation run, Spider Post Threshold. So I'm kind of combining a few things. We're combining the Spider Post Threshold requests I've been getting with the CQB that I've never actually looked at in any kind of detail, and I didn't really understand how it worked. Now I understand better what it does and how it does it, and it's kind of interesting. Um, plus, we're we're adding a little bit of the Magiclism back in so I can have a, an opponent to actually fight against for the theme. Uh, that'd be the Demon Spider Queen. So, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. It'll probably end horribly, but that's fine. I, I don't mind it ending horribly. Um, we'll give it a go. But no, this is not a min-maxed superpower build or anything like that. But um, hopefully we can get enough other stuff by the time we do decide to try to take her on that uh, we, we can survive it. I don't know. <laughs> Whether we will or won't, I haven't tested it against her or tried to uh, beef it up and test it against her. It could be completely flat impossible for all I know. So, 200 damage on average. Cool! I'm, you, you mean my 50 hit points isn't going to take a 200 damage shot? <laughs> I guess the trick is not to get hit, huh? You just, you just dodge. Dodge, dodge, dodge. Well, we're going to try to cast spells really hard and uh, get a bunch of bionics really hard and, uh, you know, all the other stuff really hard. So I, I expect we're going to die horribly as soon as I try to take on the Demon Spider Queen Lair. But uh, that's fine. That's fine. It gives me an end point to throw myself against that uh, shouldn't be too hard to track down. I usually don't have a problem finding Demon Spider Queen Lairs. That's kind of my biggest problem 
for the last year or so is just every time I try to make a, a challenge with a goal, the game doesn't ever present my goal. So the RNG never actually delivers the thing that I was trying to either find or get to or fight or whatever. So it's really annoying when that happens. But uh, I think this one's common enough. Usually we find several Spider Queen layers as we're, we're just kind of rolling around. Uh, we do have some negatives on this character, so a few things to note. Uh, it is a Bionic Assassin, which is a pretty powerful start, but we're playing Infected. Not a super big deal usually, but it could uh, impact us fairly well. The big ones are the Imperceptive Healer and the Flimsy, combined with uh, 30 Days of Evolution. So we've got a month of Evolution built into our starting point. Um, so we are going to have high level zombies in the game. We'll, we'll see some endpoint zombies, uh, the farthest evolution zombies, as well as an upgraded amount of the mid levels. So there are going to be dangerous things out there. If we get the low level zombies one on one, we'll probably just absolutely demolish them. But uh, as usual, it's groups and it's the combinations of special zombies and, uh, just depletion over time. That's the big danger. But flimsy with six strength. That means I think my health tops out around 54. It, I don't know exactly where it tops out. I want to say 54 or 55. So we're, 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 we're pretty light on the hit points and uh, the strength. So it's going to be a little tough, especially if we get a bunch of grabs going off and the pain starts ratcheting up. So I am definitely not uh, immune to death in the early game if I'm not really careful. Um, the bionics, what bionics, doop, doop, one second, switch the focus of my screen here. That's the list right there. So the mono blade is our primary melee weapon. We get the mono blade and, um, I'll talk about CQB when we get in game and I can show what it does and how it works. But, um, I never actually looked at it in detail before. I don't often play these power characters right at the start. So it's been quite a long time since I did, uh, one of these kinds of characters, and especially CQB. So I did some reading on it, and it's kind of interesting. So uh, it, we're not doing a late start. We're doing a day 61 start just like normal, but I've used the start day and the spawn delay to set it up so that the cataclysm occurred on day 30, then we wait 30 days of evolution, then we enter the game world on day 61 just like normal. So that builds in 30 days of evolution time but still starts us on the exact same day as normal, day 61, 8 a.m. So the uh, the game world is also set at a half item spawn. We got double zombies, so twice as many zombies, half the items, and the 30 day uh, of evolution. Those things are the uh, game world setup difficulty factors. And then in the character build difficulty factors is imperceptive healer and flimsy. And we paid a lot of we paid a lot of points for greater mana efficiency, and that's not going to be useful or have any effect on us for quite a long time. So we're we're front loading a lot of our points into a trait that we may may never get any actual use out of. And that always makes me nervous when I'm spending points that uh, very very necessary points that could be put to great effect elsewhere on something that I may never actually get to use. So yeah, zero skill start, but. If you, if you know how CQB works, that's not that big a problem. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to explain when we get in game. So it, it's interesting. I, I hadn't realized just what CQB does. So I'll, I'll show you once we actually fire things up. It's going to wait a short bit longer. So a few more people can pile in before we, we kick this thing off. Also double checking some of my other uh, setups and screens. So we got a lot going on with this one. We're theoretically going to be trying to do CBMs and magic and mutations, uh, all three. How successful we are, bah, who knows. Uh, I'm hoping that the semi-powerful start with the Bionic Assassin is going to let me bootstrap my way through the early parts. We do have a good intelligence, uh, so we should have a, a pretty good time reading books and all that. Um we're also a fast reader, so I'm hoping to just pile my way through the early easy skill stuff. Uh, but we'll see. The spider line is kind of interesting. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting. The spider line is kind of crazy the way it, uh, it, it sets up and some of the things it's going to do to our body and things it's going to keep us from using. 
I think eventually we can't we can't wear torso armor or torso gear. We can't I think have stuff on our arms and legs. I don't remember. I I, I just briefly looked through, but um, there's a lot of consequences to the spider post threshold point. So I was trying to find a, a combination of character and abilities and stats that would complement with the post threshold spider stuff in mind. So yeah, it's it, it's pretty. It's going to be weird if we survive long enough. I mean, I might die early and it's a moot point, but if we get near that point, because it's it's a long ways away. I mean, starting with no other skills means we've got a whole lot of stuff to get done. A whole lot of time is going to need to pass. Um, and one of the early mutations for spiders is going to be carnivore. So, yay. <laughs> Good old carnivore. With the new food settings and being, uh, uh, I don't know what's going to happen. So, it'll be interesting. It'll be a little weird. But um, the, the spider combination with the bionic assassin, with the uh, variability on what uh, martial arts you can choose and the way you can learn them, uh, should be fun. We'll see. But uh, otherwise, it's a standard game world, so 8-4, and I didn't change any of that stuff. But um, double zombies, half items was kind of my standard settings for, God, like a year, a year and a half. That was kind of my default then I started bouncing around between other things. I did just vanilla settings for a while. Then I played with the speed of the zombies and the toughness of the zombies and super advanced evolution and so on. So we're going back to the good old days of double zombies, half items, um, which was my old benchmark for, for difficulty, combined with, you know, crazy bad traits like flimsy, imperceptive healer and strength six. So we have very, very low hit points, very low hit points. 50-something. I don't know the exact number, but I know it's somewhere in the 50s. Um, so, yeah. Other than that, uh, fast reflexes, fleet foot, fast reader, and uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, no, I didn't make a Reddit post on the OP Dodge stuff. It got mentioned in the Dev Discord channel, and they were briefly bouncing some ideas about what would be done about it. I think adding some stamina drain to it. There was some reason that it did not have stamina drain, which was to prevent some other kind of a problem that occurs apparently. So I don't know. I didn't bother though. It got brought to the attention of some folks. If nothing happens for a while, then I'll, I'll bring it up again, but um, feel free to abuse the hell out of it. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's pretty easy to abuse the hell out of during character gen. So more people know about it and talk about it and uh, post comments about it when it does come up. Hopefully we can get something done about it because my opinion is it's it's broke and it could be easily toned down just by changing the formula. If they don't want to put stamina drain on dodge, fine, but at least increase the negative effect per dodge. Right now it's only minus two. Make it like minus five and the problem would largely go away. So... <clears throat> For that reason, skip fast reflexes. Eh, it also helps with uh, grab with uh, avoiding grabs. So this character is not going to have a huge amount of dodge. I mean, we're only starting with three base dodge. The dex and the fast reflexes helps a bit, but uh, it's not going to be anywhere near what those other guys had. And our uh, martial art, depending on what we pick, is going to make a big difference in uh, our abilities. It's really gonna. I'm gonna have. A, I'm gonna struggle with the uh, the CQB because I just I don't use that many martial arts all that often, and I don't often pay that much attention to the specific details uh, for circumstance. So there's <laughs> going to be a lot of situations where switching to a different martial art would probably be valuable, but I just don't know them by heart well enough to know. Uh, which one to switch to for which circumstance. And I I'm not sure yet on the power draw issues that might be occurring. So we'll see. It's going to be a bit of an, an interesting mystery. Stuff I haven't done before. And, uh, I'm looking forward to kind of delving into it and seeing how it works and doesn't work and so on. All right, let's go ahead and fire things up, though. So this is Arachne. We are the uh, Bionic Assassin starting in the infected scenario. So we do have to get our infection cleared first. That's always the number one priority. No skills other than the Dodge 3 that the Assassin comes with, but that's compensated for by the CQB, which I'll show in-game in a moment. Um, our goals are survive the infection, get to safety, obviously, 
And then from there, figure out what's going to be the best way to progress, whether it's uh, squat down and do some book reading early game, or it depends on our map. It's always going to depend on the map. So I'm not going to make too many plans ahead of time for that. But let's, uh, let's kick this thing off. Yes, I am sure I am finished. I just let it randomly pick where we start. So apparently we got a house and a pet pack. Uh, our bite wound feels infected. That's fine. That's okay. Uh, so it started us in a house. We got a zombie two spaces away and an NPC with a gun right next to us. Hey there, NPC with an AR-15. What else you got? Safety glasses, hard hat, hiking boots, diver's watch. All right. Hey there, pet pack. So pet pack is how much? 35 capacity. Hmm. <laughs> 35 encumbrance when full. Just the one, uh, the one space, huh? Max item length 17. 300 moves to remove an item. Okay, so here's the character sheet showing everything in one go, so you can kind of see what's going on. <laughs> if you look at the patch notes, they removed the spare watch in uh, build. I am up to date on the most recent build. One of the uh, the patch notes recently was removing the spare watch from the uh, yeah eleven oh oh three. Remove extra wristwatch from the Bionic Assassin. <laughs> so no longer a thing. So for Bionics, we got CQB close quarters battle. I'll show you what that does here in a second if you're not familiar. The mono molecular blade that springs out of our forearm electroshock unit for an extra bit of juice damage. Subdermal carbon filament, which is some uh, bash and cut protection underneath our skin. Uh, adrenaline pump, is implanted night vision, facial distortion, and metabolic interchange with 250 bionic power storage capability, a Mark II power storage. So the big ones are the mono blade and the CQB, of course. Electroshock, yeah, I'm not sure how often I would use that. I don't know how big a drain the other bionics are going to be and how much power problems I might have. Night vision, same. I'll use it, of course, when needed. Facial distortion, I could care less about. And Adrenaline Pump will have its situational uses as well. So yeah, the double watch has been nerfed. A <laughs> uh, whole bunch of zeros in the skills department. We have 9.4 dodge theoretically, but as soon as I move a space or let time pass, that's going to drop because of the, uh, the pain we'll be in from the infection and other factors. So that's going to drop down. Otherwise, no skills of any kind. Let's check our game world. Ooh, well that's kind of weird looking. City with a tiny bit of forest border. A big open area. A river blocking our progress movement to the north. Campsite. A homeless shelter. Uh, one library slash bookstore. Bookstore. No hunting supply stores. I, I don't like this place. I don't like it much. One magic shop on the outer edge. I kind of like the magic shop on the outer edge. That's actually pretty good. A possible metalworking craft shop. Subway station. I can't, I, I can't wait to see what the subway station middle level has for zombie population on double zombies. It's going to be atrocious. It's going to be bad. That's not too bad, though. we got an apartment tower, a magic shop, a clothing store... A garage so this side of town's pretty cool the problem being i got no retreat path <laughs> unless i want to go swimming so if i go up there and i get in trouble i got n i got nowhere i can just retreat to so that's not awesome look at all these homeless shelters homeless shelter homeless shelter homeless shelter homeless shelter kind of weird mill surplus and a fire station also fairly cool Multiple hardware stores. The good old wizard tower next to another pharmacy. So at least we got a couple of pharmacies to choose from. Ooh, and a pawn shop. Oh, and a library as well. Cool. All right. It's not terrible. I hate having rivers near my starting position, though. It always... I feel restricted and bound in my, my options.
The red W's, that's a shipwreck. That's where the crab men live. No gray F's. Oh, there is a gray F. Holy crap. Well, you are correct. I didn't notice. So we have the uh, Demon Spider Queen lair. <laughs> right there. So I guess... I, I, uh, I'm not particular about which Demon Spider Queen lair I go after. I'll try to make this one the one we go after for thematic reasons. This this Demon Spider Queen killed my master, or killed my mom, something, and now I have to go kill the Demon Spider Queen and take her place, become the new Demon Spider Queen. Shipwreck base? <laughs> no time soon. <laughs> Those things would mess me up. Razor Claws are nasty. They have this really, really bad stun effect, and they hit hard. So, unless I can get all the Razor Claws to go interact with all the zombies and get a big zombie Razor, Cross, Razor Claw scrum going on to clear most of them out. We'll see. It's early days. We got a lot of stuff we got to get accomplished. We got mutations. We got regular skills to learn. We got to go through the whole damn mutation process. We got the whole bionic process. It's going to take a while. Well, the brazier is free and easy anywhere. Brazier is super easy to make. <clears throat> Not too worried about a brazier. Might be a couple of food items. Possibly be a working motorcycle. All right, so we are currently... Ooh, construction site. All right, I'm calling it. This construction site is going to have a pristine excavator that I can just hop in and drive away in. That's, that's it right there. Construction site. Pristine excavator. You want a shipwreck base? Well, want in one hand, crap in the other, and see which one fills up first. <laughs> Do, 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 do. Kill the NPC type of stuff? Nah. I uh, I don't like NPCs. I don't play with NPCs. I don't cheese off NPCs. So the, the, the most I'll do with an NPC is let him be a distraction while I run away. <laughs> but otherwise, I just ignore NPCs. If I could turn them off, I would, but I can't turn them off anymore. I don't think I can. Didn't they remove that option? We no longer have those choices now. Only things I see nearby, oops, back, sort. The pet pack will be good. The NPC will kill the zombie. The problem is going to be the NPC is going to shoot his gun, which is going to immediately attract every zombie in the area. So I got to be thinking about where I'm going to try to break contact with the enemies. So unfortunately, we got a pond and a wooded trail. So this is all basically open with just a little bit of tree coverage. Um... So as soon as the NPC starts opening up with the gun, I, I'm going to have a problem. Nah, no wander spawns. I stopped bothering with them a while back. I played with them for years and years and years, and I just don't notice enough of a difference in the actual gameplay. So, Lots of plans and plans and plans on fixing slash replacing that system. But as is, it's somewhat broke. I play with it, I don't play with it, and I don't really care. I normally recommend people play with the Wander Spawns later once they know how to play the game. They don't, I mean, they do add a little more difficulty, and they're only occasionally obnoxious, so. Either way. <clears throat> but, I mean, I've done it for years and years with Wander Spawns, and eh. It really just depends on what kind of a challenge run you're doing. I mean, if you're brand new to the game, or new-ish, and you're still learning how to do things, and learning how to stay alive and all that, don't bother. But later, when you're trying to find ways to make your life more interesting and difficult, turn them on. But what if they occasionally are obnoxious? They still do add some difficulty factor. Okay, so there's our total gear. We have a smartphone, basic clothes, really basic clothes, smartphone and a wristwatch. Don't need both. <laughs> 
So, given this situation, we are going to be backing into the room with the backpack. That means we're not going to be able to get down into the kitchen unless the, the NPC kills the zombie quickly. Or we kill the zombie quickly, whichever. Yeah, we'll just kind of adapt as we go. So let's talk about the bionics. So here's our bionics list. Metabolic interchange, if you don't know what that does, it basically converts your, your hunger or calories into power. So while you turn it on, you gain power, but you make yourself hungrier and you uh, you need to replace that with more food, more calories. So it has consequences, but it's the only way I have to power up my bionics. It's not terribly fast, and um, so you got to be careful. Uh, electroshock units. Here, I'll, I'll turn on the descriptions. So metabolic interchange, digestive system and power supply are interconnected. Bionic energy is replenished by burning calories, can be toggled on and off at will. The electroshock, while fighting unarmed or with a weapon that conducts electricity, there's a chance that a successful hit will shock your opponent, inflicting extra damage and disabling them temporarily at the cost of some energy. Adrenaline pump, just uh, you, you hit it and you get a surge of uh, adrenaline, uh, just like the, the the one you can inject normally. Uh, implanted night vision, just gives you night vision. So does burn power, 10 joules to activate, 10 joules per turn. To use so there is power drain close quarters battle this is a complicated one so take a look at this one so bionic processors and data banks loaded with martial arts combat programs are surgically integrated into your nervous system whilst active the cqb module will improve your hand-to-hand -hand combat skills but prevents you from improving them through combat experience so what that means is when i activate this i'll get a menu asking me what what martial art i want to use I can pick from a big old pile. I don't know if it's all of them or if some of them are off the list, but it's a huge list. I can pick any martial art that I want. And while I have that active, I get to use that martial art and it raises all of my combat skills to five or lowers them to five. <laughs> they all equalize at five. So if I happen to have nine unarmed and nine melee, they'll drop to five as soon as I turn on CQB. So basically it sets all of your combat stuff to the number five. So I have zeros currently, but as long as I have CQB running, they'll all be running at level five and I'll be able to pick whatever martial art I want. But while I have it active, I gain no actual experience in any of my combat categories. So I can't power level myself or gain skill while using the CQB computer system. Now, the offset to that is if I kill enemies, while using CQB, whatever martial art I happen to be using at that time, I have a chance to auto-learn it. So there's a chance you can learn the martial arts as you go. How many I am going to need to kill, what the chances are, I don't know. I, I don't know what the actual percentages are or, or so on. That's one of the things I'm hoping to test and find out. So we're going to try to see how many of the different martial arts we can actually learn. So... It also offers, I think, one of the only ways to get to the Bionic Combatives uh, martial arts style. So that's what we're going to be using initially. Um, so that's pretty much it. And then the Monomolecular Blade, a deadly foot-long blade made of advanced material, resides inside your forearm, extends through the back of your wrist at the cost of a small amount of power. Exceptionally sharp, it will prevent you from holding anything else while extended. So we won't be able to, to hold things in both hands which causes problems when you're trying to like carry a, a 60 liter tank or things like that. So you'll be constantly flicking the mono blade on and off uh, in order to carry things, depending on what you're doing and how you're doing it. So there you go. That's the list. So let's go ahead and go uh, mono blade on. Oh yeah. Let's get off of the description screen. We're going to turn on the mono blade and then we'll turn on the CQB. There's the menu. Select a style. You can press F1 to get more details on the styles, but this is, I think, is this the only way to get Bionic Combatives? Or are there some... Bionic Combatives is nicknamed Biojutsu. So anybody mentioning Biojutsu in chat, it's talking about Bionic Combatives. Uh, Bionic Combatives is the official name. Biojutsu is the nickname. Uh, I believe this is the only way to get the Bionic Combatives or Biojutsu uh, combat abilities. And if we hit F1 on it... We can arm and leg block if we install arm and leg alloy plating. And I'm really, really, really hoping we can find some arm and leg alloy plating and getting it installed. In addition to growing out all our extra limbs for the spider. In addition to the chitinous exoskeleton that we're going to get. 
I'm really, really curious just how much damage we can block if we've got Biojutsu going with the subdermal layer, with the alloy plating, with the uh, the uh, exoskeleton, the chi or exoskeleton from the spider uh, post threshold. Um, I'm wondering if all of that will stack successfully into ridiculous blocks. I don't know. <laughs> we're going to have a whole bunch of dodge attempts and we're going to have a whole bunch of block ability if we can manage to combine all this stuff. So the stance gives us an accuracy bonus. Um, optimization op gives us bonuses. Oh, kill buffs. Yeah, optimization. Oh, there's just all sorts of stuff. It's It's pretty crazy. Now, with the... CQB active, we qualify for every one of these because they're all five or less. So we'll be able to do all of these abilities. So we've got block counters, we've got disarms, uh, we've got the impaling strike for 150% damage, um, and it stuns, measured strikes, measured strikes, takedowns, and then finally the one and only AOE martial art uh, style. Martial art uh, technique. Biojutsu Cleave will attack in a wide arc in front of you. So, offensive melee five, only be used while armed, and uh, yeah, activates on a crit and attacks in a wide arc. So, there you go. That's what we're going for. We're trying to be a, uh, a super assassin spider spellcasting monstrosity with just absolutely ridiculous block and uh, hopefully a bunch of dodges. So let's go ahead and go with Bionic Combatives for now. So we got that turned on and activated. We'll leave the rest off. And I'm gonna I'm gonna stand here and see if that zombie moves towards me or if the NPC shoots it. So efficient strike for 34. And he shot him anyway. <laughs> Lovely. So did we get our hit in? Uh, so we, we dodged the efficient struck times. To, oh, we got two efficient strikes. The zombie grabbed me, but then he shot the zombie. Okay. So it's on like Donkey Kong. Now the noise has been made. Uh, we got more noise coming from the South. So there might be somebody in the house there as well. Let's just back over, put on the pet pack while he goes crazy. Oh, I dare go downstairs while he's up here doing a Rambo. Yeah, let's at least go see what kind of basement it is. The raincoat. Just the... Oh, this is the, uh, the basement that has the uh, auto-dock possibility. So there might be an auto-dock room back here. We're going to get, uh, we're going to get shrieked at. I can't tell if it's the auto-dock basement until I can get into that room. Lot, oh, oh, the rats killed the shrieker. Well, thanks, rats. That was cool of you. It, it... Oh, they changed it. Never mind. <laughs> it used to be the auto dock basement. Did they change this? So now it's a uh, what a sauna or a infinity pool and a bathroom area. Because this design up here used to house it. It had a wall here, and there was a door behind a locker you could go into, and this was the auto dock room. So they must have multiple versions of this, because I'm pretty sure there's still a starting point that has the auto dock basement room. Yeah, I think it's just a variant. Alright, we'll let the zombies and the rats play around with each other. Go around them. Activate 10 to turn on. 20 to activate, 20 per turn. So if I'm not using it, I should turn it off. Oh yeah, any, any books? 
Just the one. Not worried about Trapper's life. All right, let's get out of here before things become unmanageable. Hey, flashlight. Ramadol. What else we got? Heartburn, aspirin. We're going to find a lot of aspirin. I'm not worried about that. Yeah, the Autodoc version always has one of the uh, broken cyborg guys. I kind of want to go down into the kitchen area, but uh, how are you guys doing? He's not having much luck against the zombie. Fine. <laughs> he instantly gets a grab on me. feel about this <laughs> this is on 50 percent uh, uh item spawns <laughs> huh <laughs> well i guess i'll take it <laughs> huh. that's uh not how my runs usually go Lighter. Oh. Uh, peanuts. I don't care about the rest. Hey now. Hmm. All right, what do we got? Hammer. Fires. I want the string and the duct tape too. And we already took a hit. Grabby damn zombies. What do we got out here? Three, probably more. Hmm. Uh, we want a knife. I don't remember, was the chef knife or the butcher knife? I usually care about 25 butchering. <laughs> 10 butchering. 15 butchering. Uh... Oh crap. Ugh, grabs. Well, it's going to be a moot point because I can't break a grab. Now we're in uh, unmanageable pain. I knew grabs were going to be a problem. So, as you can see, powerful, but not <laughs> even in any way, shape, or form, uh, invulnerable. 
Alright, grabs are bad. Got it. Problem is that the grab gets inherited by the other things nearby, so... Getting rid of the one thing a lot of times does not uh, break the grab. And as long as you continuously have somebody adjacent to you, it just keeps on switching. Switching martial art to a grab break one would probably be helpful. That's the thing I was mentioning earlier about... Uh, I gotta be more careful when I've got CQB about switching between the various martial arts. Take advantage of their options. Alright, uh, so now we're pretty hammered. We didn't get any extra bites. We're bleeding. We've got... Uh, the, the, the super big problem here is the imperceptive healer with the fragile. Or frail, whichever one I've got. I get, oh, flimsy. <laughs> the, the other F one. So it's going to take me forever to get this hit, these hit points back. And we're still pretty much in the middle of the town. So, we've got the antibiotics. The most important thing is to take a dose and then break contact, get to a safe spot, and uh, pick my fights. I'm still really, really not liking the buildings we have here at the top end. see here. Take our uh, antibiotics. The adrenaline rush is keeping us from feeling the pain currently. We don't need the tram at all till the adrenaline rush wears off. I don't know exactly when the adrenaline rush is going to wear off. I'm hoping there's not much to my north. What do we got? Oh, we definitely want a whistle. Thermal electric outfit. Feel free to go investigate that noise, buddy. Not much else, unfortunately. So, he's going to attract some attention. I can go out north. Hey! Look at that right there. Look at that right there. <laughs> is it showing me uh, just an actual engine crane, or is that the front icon on an uh, excavator? I want it to be an excavator <laughs> that I can drive off in. Let's see. Butcher, 10 minutes. Holy crap. Out of a sheet, five seconds. Do that. Activate. Egg. Why to my head? All right, so we got the, uh, the bleeding taken care of. A few extra rags. I want to get moving before the adrenaline rush wears off. I don't want to spend too much time here. So, out we go. It is just an engine crane sitting there. Ooh, mining helmet. All right, working vehicle is going to be our next most important thing. No wheels. SWAT truck with wheels. And a broken security system. And a uh, perfect looking battery, com or engine, com not perfect, but a really good looking engine compartment, barring the broken windshield. So it looks great so far. What I don't know is, does the battery have any charge? It probably does, given those conditions. And then... Um, that's really all I need to know. If it's got gas is the only other question. And there it is. It does have gas. I think we got a working, uh, working SWAT truck. There's still a possibility it won't drive, but uh, all the indications that I can see remotely say that it's a possibility. So straight for the mining helmet and into the SWAT truck.
that would be pretty amazing to have an infected start with this second zombie dead dropping antibiotics and then uh, having a working SWAT truck right next to the house. Yeah, rags only stop bleeding. Uh, healing effects. Small healing effect on bleeding. Doesn't have any ongoing benefit. <clears throat> yeah, I don't see any reason not to just go right for the uh, right for the mining truck or the uh, the SWAT truck. I really should get full stamina before I make the run, though. Pop back in for a moment. Wait here. See if that kid comes climbing into the window. All right, be nice to me, zombie child. <laughs> miss, miss. Three misses so far. That doesn't bode well. And now we're deaf from the... Uh, not quite deaf yet. Impaired hearing. Come on, stamina. He's having a good old time out there. All right, let's go now. Look out the adrenaline rush. He's drawn in most of the nearby zombies. Oh, crap. <laughs> because, of course. <laughs> uh, what the hell? <laughs> No other zombies in the area, but they are all going to hang out right there. And the broken windshield is going to let the, uh, the the hunters just hop right into the vehicle with me. If I just try to jump inside. Well, that's pretty damn annoying. Huh. There's nothing else up there that I can use for cover. Uh, I can maybe keep them in the shadow of the car. That's not the issue. The issue is as soon as I step to this location, they're going to see me. Then it's going to take me like 500 moves to step there. Then another 500 to step there. <laughs> so they're all going to be surrounding the vehicle. And these guys are going to be in the vehicle with me by the time I get into the driver's seat. So it's not, not really a problem of sneaking up on them. It's that even if I get that close, they're still going to be all over me. At least the uh, the two hunters will. Crouching would massively increase the amount of points it would take me. It might prevent them from seeing me initially. I'm not sh I'm not 100 on that. Crouching might help if we can get to that point, but I'm already close enough that they're right on the edge of being able to see me where I'm at right now. All right, what else do we got in the area? That's what, a security van? A security van with no wheels. No wheels. Wheels, but no assembly and no hub assembly? That's interesting. Still drivable. It's got a security system, though. And a faulty engine. So, probably not drivable. The best hope is still that van. It's just, how can I get to it? Hmm. You'd think the gunfire would reach that far and be drawing those guys over here. But uh, the noise system in the game is pretty weird. And the sound of them, the other zombies nearby moving or breaking the fence is keeping them all in a cluster up there. If I had any other cover, I could draw them into the other spots, but got almost no other cover. The only thing I could think of is to go up this way... Try to attract them up towards this house while I go out the back and kind of circle around. Let's do that. That'll get me further away from the other nasty stuff. Might be an empty house that we can take advantage of while we, uh, we lurk the area. 
We'll go to the far north side. No wheels. What do we got? String. Solder clamp. I want a stock pot. I want a regular size pot. So that's unfortunate. Candles. Haven't they been massively debuffed? <laughs> Nerfed? Already got a flashlight. Already got a good lighter. We'll take a candle. Get the screwdriver. So we got the screwdriver, the hammer, and the pliers. Take a battery and more string. Laundry basket. Whoops. Can't close that window. No drapes. Still hasn't seen me and nothing over there anyway. Well, that wasn't much. Alright, so now the hope is that I can peek out this way... Come south, blow my whistle if I have to, try to pull that group north while I go back out and around, circle far enough out that as they come up this way, they don't spot me and come straight at me, but try to circle back out and then around and down and get back to the van. That's the hope. Candles are still good. Stop crouching before circling? I don't know. Crouch suicide is a real thing and should be uh, have attention brought to the possibility. What else can I do right now in this house? I could grab some more string, but that's not really going to be hard to gather, especially if I get a vehicle and get moving. Yep, that would be the one. <laughs> <clears throat> who knows maybe Korg will log on later and hear all this talk about one-shotting characters and uh, modify the Demon Spider Queen before we actually get to the final showdown it could happen can't think of anything else I really want or need from this house. We don't have much in the way of food items yet. That shouldn't be a big problem. Um, yeah, let's just get it done. Famine is good. We're still on the adrenaline rush, so now's the best time. What'll suck is as soon as I get their attention, the adrenaline will crash. All right, zombie and a chipmunk can both see me. Step on out. Whoops, so they're gone? They're gone! They're gone, they went somewhere. I think they went chasing an animal, probably. Okay, so we got the fat zombie and we got a zombie child we know are in the area. I'm just gonna go for it. I think they're on the back side of the, uh, the forest area there.
We have just enough battery, only 3.2 liters of diesel. Otherwise, perfectly drivable, looks like. Don't see any reasons why it wouldn't be. Broken window is a little problematic, but uh, we can deal. So, oh, that's what I forgot. Damn it. I gotta go back. Oof, how am I gonna do it with strength five? <laughs> I need a rubber hose. <laughs> I've got the hammer and screwdriver so I can take apart the refrigerator instead of, uh, let's see. I should relocate this thing first. We'll use it to run over the zombies here, drive up north, park back here if I'm clean, go in, disassemble the refrigerator, get the rubber hose, then I'll be able to uh, refuel it on the move. Yeah, that's what we should do. Yeah, it's not even run over the zombies. Can I get it done fast enough? Uh, I'm going to need a light for this, aren't I? Cool. Give me that rubber hose. And I'll take some minor items as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, it did turn it off. Ah, so I'm holding that sheet metal. I grab any others? Yes. Cool. All right. Let's, uh, let's just see if we can get out of here successfully then. What do we got? HK MP5 with 13 rounds, Sig Pro 40 with 8 rounds, some shotgun ammo, and some bandages. Not bad. Some machine gun, 40 cal handgun, and uh, some shotgun ammo. Not the best. SWAT armor would have been appreciated. Hey, uh, unmanageable pain. <laughs> I'm guessing the adrenaline wore off. Yes, it did. That's a whole lot of negative. Let's go ahead and take some uh, tramadol. 